Hello guys, I'm Dr. Aishwarya Vyajman, APG All India Rank 778. So by thumbnail, you must know what this video is going to be about. By far, this is the most requested video for me on YouTube. Uh, when I started the channel, I never thought somebody would request a video from me. So this is very special and uh, thanks for all the love and keep supporting. Without any delay, let's get started. This is the book that we are talking about today. I got to know about it from Dr. Aditya Gupta. I think 90% of us know about it from him. He has made it so popular and I am very thankful for that. I actually got the book in last uh, July. I started preparing in June and uh, got it in July. So that's like I used it for 8 months before actually giving me PG. So if you are planning to use this book and you are preparing for any of the upcoming exams, I would recommend that you start studying from this right now and uh, only then it will be useful. So this book is actually made for USMLE step 1 and it contains all the first and second year subjects, those high yielding points in a very concise manner. As you already know, we can also use it for NAPG or NICT and it has proved to be helpful for a lot of people. So let's see how it is actually beneficial and how to make use of it. The first great thing about this book is that it is very concise and it will be very helpful for the last 10 day revision. Uh, I'll give you a perfect example for this. I have done micro only and only from first year. I have not watched any video. I have not used any other notes also. I have done only from this book. So if I had used marrow notes, which I have used for other subjects, that is like around 500 pages. It is this big for micro alone. But here in first aid, it is just 60 pages, just 60 pages. Now can you imagine how concise it is? It's like literally like one tenth of the entire book. So it's great, especially for the last 10 days revision where you don't have a lot of time for each subject and you have to cover everything. That's where it becomes crucial and most useful. The other good thing is that it got some great mnemonics and tables. I'll give you another example. Last November INICT, there were uh, two questions in two sessions where uh, the question was about morule in uh, anaplasmosis and ehrlichiosis. Uh, I think a lot of us got confused it with Riketsha, but it was not. Here they have given a mnemonic mega where uh, the morule of monocytes are present in ehrlichiosis and morule of anaplasmosis are present in granulocytes. If you knew just this part, then there would be no confusion and obviously those who read from this book got an extra edge there. They would have definitely got the question right. So that's how helpful it is. And coming to the tables, hepatitis B is such a frequently asked question and it is just two pages in this book and there are two important tables. One is about the serology and the other table is about the different hepatitis viruses. So if you know just this, I bet you can answer every question regarding hepatitis. Do I need to tell more? And another example is vitamins which are asked extensively these days and last week PG around the 10 questions were from vitamins alone. And in this book, it's just 5 to 6 pages. But that's not it. The keywords which are used in the exams are exactly the words which are used in this book. So you don't really need to get confused about anything once you read from this. So is this book enough by itself? Just by using this book, can anybody get a great rank? I would say it is a good book, but to make it enough and worthy of your time during the last revision, you have to put in a lot of efforts uh, annotating this book. I'll tell you why. Everyone knows the uh, leukemia is a very important chapter and every exam we get uh, one or the other question from the same topic. So here it is given with some great pictures and a very brief information but the most important part that is the FAB classification or the prognostic factors are not given which is where mainly the questions come from. That part you have to add it here. The key is for the last revision you have to have all the things together so that you don't run from one place to another uh, during that crucial time. This book is just right for that. Also, I said that for micro, I've used only first aid. So how I annotated micro was, I used to read a topic from this book, like for example, mycology. I study from here, then go to the marrow cube bank and solve those questions. If I find any useful information there, which is not present in the book, I would just add it right here. Like not just 
that time here in this book uh, the dimorphic fungi are given together they've got some great images and all the information required but they've not given the alternative names for these diseases for example uh, histoplasmosis is also called as darling's disease but that is not already given in this book but i got the question during some test and while reviewing that test i had not answered it and i knew that i had to add it to the book i won't do the same mistake in the exam if it is asked so that's when I opened the book and uh, added it here. So that's how you study. It's not just once. You have to do it multiple times. Whenever you do a particular topic from a subject or whenever you come across that and you think it's not given in the book and it is important, you have to come back and write it here. So everything about this book is great. Whoever uses this must get a great rank. But that's not always the case. I'll tell you why. The thing is, it's not meant to be read for once or twice. During my last 10 days revision, I have done uh, biochem in around 2 to 3 hours and for that to happen, I have read biochem for around 7 to 8 times before that. Some people just do it once or twice and think there is nothing so special about this. Uh, actually, they are right in a way. There is nothing special about the book. You have to put in your efforts to create that magic. Also, another thing is some people read this so that they can remember this. But here you have to read this and remember this. And for that to happen, again, repeated revisions is what is needed. Having said all that, I don't want anybody to fall into the FOMO and purchase this book just for the sake of it. So that's why I asked my friends who got great ranks if they use the book or not. And what I found was only 6 out of 10 people including myself have got the book and other 4 of them have not even used the book and got great ranks. So that's the proof you don't really need this book to get a great rank. Even if you have your own notes or uh, you have purchased the notes, you can just mark the previous year topics there and leave the rest of it. Add any other important points that you get uh, from anywhere to that book and make it as useful as this. So don't fall into the FOMO. You don't need this book for a great rank. If you work hard, you can get a great rank anyway. But this book is just a smarter way to get there. I also asked one of my friends to summarize it. And he has done so beautifully. I don't think I could have done it better than this. So let me read it. This book is brilliant for summarization. It is a book to be read along with the subject to enrich your studies. If you can annotate into the book or add its content, to your notes, you'll have the upper hand for exams such as INICT and NEET. It is not, however, a book to FOMO into and study last moment as it will cause more harm than the good. You have to make a conscious decision to use it at an earlier stage of preparation. That being said, it's not a must. People have been able to do extremely well without it and people with it have done bad. It all comes down to how many revisions you have done and how confident you are with your study material. It's perfect summary. Thank you Tejas for this. Hope you all liked this video and found it useful. If so, please leave your comments below and like, share and subscribe for more. Thank you.